running and even debugging and developing Android application right from within Windows 11 with Windows Subsystem for Android WSA you can. So by now you've probably heard of the Windows subsystem for Linux, which allows you to run Linux applications from within Windows. And nowadays you can actually run even graphical user interface applications uh, built for Linux on Windows. You can debug them through Visual Studio. It's all kinds of craziness. You will see that little tux icon, the mascot for Linux showing up in the Windows Explorer. 20 years, 10 years ago, no one thought this was ever gonna happen, but here we are. Um, and now Microsoft is taking it even a step further. We now have Windows subsystem for Android, which allows you to seamlessly run Android applications from within your Windows 11 installation. We'll see that in a little bit what that looks like, but it, it, it kind of looks like the frame is um, a Windows app, but inside of it is actually the Android app, but you can snap it left and right um, with all the new things that Windows 11 is bringing. So it's, it's really, really crazy. But for developers, it's even cooler, right? It's much more exciting. You can just use this to replace um, the emulators that you might have running as well. So this is much, much cooler. Um, of course, you know, there may be some pros and cons. So be sure to check out the whole video where I go over um, that for a little bit as well. But for now, let's just dive in and check out what this is exactly. But first, um, I think the prerequisites, you have to have Windows 11. Um, you need to be on the beta channel right now at the time of recording, I think. Um, I think I've seen some people running it also on the uh, GA version as well, but be sure to um, use Bing to find if that is actually possible. Um, and another thing is at the time of recording, this is only available for people in the US. Now, let me just start sharing my screen. So here we are on my Windows installation. And the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have the optional Windows features to make this happen. So I'm going to press the Windows key and R here, which will bring up this little run dialog. And I'm going to go to optional features. It's already filled in from the last time. And whenever you press OK, um, it will bring up that little dialog for the Windows feature. So um, you can see everything that's installed here. And if you scroll down a little bit, we'll come across the virtual machine platform. That's the thing that you need to install to make this actually work. So make sure that is checked, um, click OK. You might have to download and restart some things. Um, but after that, you're golden, you're good to go. So let's close this. And then you're going to have to go to this URL right here. I'll put it down in the video description. Remember, this only works for US customers. Um, so, you know, that's kind of sucks at the moment. I think it will be available for um, other people um, at some time as well. But for now, you're stuck to the US, unfortunately. Um, and here, this is just the Windows the Microsoft App Store, right? So um, you can just get this, click the Get button, it will take you to the Windows Store app, or you can just open the Windows Store app, um, search for Android, and you will find it as well. Now, if you have this installed, you will get the um, Windows subsystem for Android right here. And kind of like the Windows subsystem for Android is kind of like an headless um, Android emulator, if you will. Um, so you never really get to see the home screen or the icons on that or that kind of stuff, or at least I don't know how to bring it up. Um, but you can launch the applications that are available on there. So we also have the uh, Amazon apps store on here. So if I go to my um, start menu, I can search for Amazon. And this is really cool, right? The apps that are on this um, Windows subsystem for Android are also integrated in my start menu. So I can just start the um, Amazon app store here, which is going to say that it's currently not available in my country. Surprise, surprise. Uh, so I really can't do anything besides like, you know, running it as a developer and doing that. And that's the thing that I'm mostly interested in anyway. So um, let's just close this. But this actually, this actually what you're seeing here is all already a Android app. Um, now the same here, this is kind of like the, the configuration screen for the whole Android emulator. So if we go to the files, um, it will bring up a little file explorer thing and we can um, go over to the file system here. And again, you can see this is, you can see that this is a Windows 11 app. We have the close button and minimize and maximize. We have a little back button here to navigate back because that's what Android applications do. Um, but if you see here, the actual app looks more like an Android app, right? And we can navigate through the file system here. I can go to the images. There's nothing here yet. And you can see this little um, 
hamburger menu going up and down. So this is this is already an Android app. Um, now we have the screen reader, which is you know accessibility. Very nice that this is in here as well. Um, the subsystem resources. That's also something that is um, well very important if you want to use this as kind of like a consumer and run the Android applications. You might want to set it to as needed. Um, it will take a little bit of time before the apps to start. Um, so you know um, if you have this disabled, it's probably better for your battery life and that kind of stuff. But it will take a little bit longer for your apps to start initially. And if you are not using any Android Android apps that will go to sleep in the background um, because I'm probably going to use this pretty heavily. I set it to continuous, so basically my Android emulator is running in the background the whole time, and it will pop up a little bit more uh, faster. So um, that is a good thing as well. Now, of course, the more important thing here is the developer mode. So um, whenever you put this to on. It basically does the whole dance of like tapping your Android device and enabling the developer mode and doing all that kind of things. Um, and again, if we go in here and we say manage developer settings, you can see that it pops this Android app for our developer settings. So this should look pretty familiar if you've been working and debugging on Android apps. Um, and the nice thing is it already sets up the USB debugging, although it's kind of like fake USB, right? Um, so we can use this to actually debug our application. Now, if you look a little bit further here, ADB can be connected through some kind of loopback port. So it's looped back to local host with 58526 uh, as a port. So you can just connect to your local machine um, and it should connect. I, I've heard some people who have issues with this. Um, so there's also this IP address down here. It has its own IP address and one of these basically should work. Remember for this IP address, you also need this port for ADB to actually connect. So um, that's all there. You can use that to actually connect on here. I don't think you need to open any ports or do anything fancy. Um, now, what else is here? Reset to defaults, um, turn off, um, of course, the license and agreements. Make sure to read that. Um, but I think with everything set up here, it's time for us to see how we can do this in Visual Studio. And if you've been a little bit familiar with like the Android um, development, then you know ADB is kind of like the generic thing um, that that. Android users for the debugging, right? So this doesn't only work for Visual Studio, it also works for VS Code, it also works for Android Studio, it works for everything because it's just a emulator that is running in the background. Now, let me bring up Visual Studio here. I already prepared a little file new um, .NET MAUI application just to be on all the latest bits. So that is right here. Um, the thing that I needed to do, you need to manually connect that to ADB to um, the actual emulator here. So go over to Tools and you have Android and then you have this ADB command prompt right here. And that brings up a new terminal window. And then we can say ADB connect 127 dot o dot o dot one five eight five two six and whenever i do that it says connected and boom i'm connected and i'm ready to go you could have here that it says connection refused i even saw an error where it says like the authentication failed or something like that um, just play with it a little bit adb connect here and there um, and it will automatically at some point be connected and it seems uh, whenever you did it once then the next connections will be uh, a little bit more hassle free so if you now go back to visual studio i see here the android emulator that's not the one so be sure to here go to the drop down and it's for some reason under the local devices and not under emulator so there is a slight difference on how this is seen. And you can see the Microsoft Corporation subsystem for Android. So we can click that. And whenever we do and I run it, um, it will start building, it will start deploying, but it will all deploy to my local machine. And instead of um, deploying it to the little emulator frame thing that you've got running, you will now see that it deploys as a um, separate application, but it looks like an Android application, but it's actually on Windows. So, you know, here we are our Maui app running on Windows subsystem for Android. How cool is that? Now, as I said in the beginning, the pros and cons, what's what's happening here? I've seen people ask like, hey, how can we set up multiple emulators with this? I don't think you can. Um, maybe that will come in the future. I think this is also still kind of in preview. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the status is, but this is, I mean, this is primarily targeted to consumers, right? To run Android applications on your Windows machine. So I hope that the developers 
developers will get some love as well and we get some more control over what's installed and the API version and that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, you know, this is just a quick and easy way. I hope it is a little bit um, less resource intensive as well um, for you to run your Android emulator um, just to get your app on here and do those things. Also, another thing I haven't really looked into myself, but it also another thing that I'm wondering is how this goes about with like the permissions. Um, how does it work with permissions requesting? Is that implemented? Is that kind of like granted automatically because this is a, a, a different um, platform that you're running on? Um, so, you know, I don't really know how it, it, it realistic it is to test your app on Windows 11 and actually deploy it to Android uh, device and then run into all kinds of issues with permissions or um, other sensors maybe, I don't know. Um, so that's definitely something that we want to look into as well. Um, if you have any more experience in that area, please let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to learn from you as well. Uh, so that's kind of like a, a couple of my thoughts right here about all of this. But, you know, this is really cool, really exciting. Um, I never know I don't know how they do this this is pure magic to me so this is um, really cool and it makes it so much easier to um, just whip up that emulator and start testing um, your applications thank you so much for watching again one of my videos please click that like button on this video if you've actually liked it check if you've subscribed to my channel because you know I always love to have more subscribers and then the information will come to you instead of you having to come look for me so make sure that subscribe button is lit up and maybe ding that little bell of notifications that you will get the notifications automatically whenever I post something new. And for the rest, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding. Psst. So remember when I said you had to live in the US for all this to work? Well, I'll tell you a little secret. I don't live in the US.